before. It's been a gem for a long time. Uh, we have a master plan and strategic vision vision with that we need your community input on. That's what this is all about. We, it's necessary to support not only the arts and the cultural mission of the workhouse uh, campus, but it's also provides us an opportunity to make sure that we respect the historic character of the buildings as well as the area. So we're gonna to continue to activate the workhouse campus. It's clearly part of our Lorton placemaking, our visioning efforts. And we realize the community is essential to create and, and help us implement the vision for what we want to see in Lorton over the next 20 or 30 years. Um, I think as most of you know, this is already a great place for the community to gather for concerts, the Haunt the community market, Vernon Knight's uh, summer concert series, fireworks, we have art, artists in action and other many, many great events. Uh, but there, and we believe there's potential for so much more. And that's really part of the conversation we're hoping to have. And, and part of the opportunity is to make sure that the facility that we put together has the ability to deliver on the, that so much more. So we put the residents during the Lorton 20 visioning, 2040 visioning process uh, that hopefully that most of you know is a separate process, but we still looking for the broader community amenities, the, the broader Lorton, if you will, area. But this is more targeted specifically at the Lorton, uh, the Workhouse Arts Campus. So overall in our area though, I think most of you hopefully are familiar, we have not only the, the consideration of Fairfax Peaks, which is the indoor ski facility, we have what we call uh, Overlook Ridge, which is the former uh, construction debris landfill, which is, has gorgeous views from on top that we will be looking forward to opening up in the next couple of years. And uh, we have the historic uh, Aquaquan, uh, we have Lucy Burns Museum, we have the Liberty Adaptive Reuse, uh, just really down the street from the workhouse. We have the Aquapon Regional Park, which is just below the workhouse. And we also have the Turning Point Suffragist uh, National Memorial, which is part of the Aquapon Regional Park. Uh, in the general area, we have not only all that, well, actually one more thing to mention, we also have the workhouse uh, buildings, which we are currently in the process of renovating the exterior of that, which we call it W13 and W15. And you'll hear a little bit more about that tonight. But in the area, we have incredible uh, mountain biking trails that are known throughout the state. We have the Laurel Hill Golf Course. We have the Giles Run Frisbee Golf Course. We have the Central Green Picnic Area. Uh, we have the Lorton Volunteer Fire Station, which is, is uh, just uh, been completed and now is open. Uh, we have the new Lorton Community Center and Library, which is going to be coming in the next month. We'll be having an opening for that, so stay tuned and look forward to seeing you there. And then we also have a new police station and animal shelter um, around the corner that's coming up next year. And finally, we have a new fire station out in Mason Neck that'll be coming up in the next several years. So lots of different things in the area. And we bring all this together with something we call Potomac Banks, which is ties in all the different uh, art as well as historic venues, including the National Museum of the US Army, which is essentially just down, this, just down 95. So lots going on. You can find out more about it by just going to the, the, uh, the uh, Visit Fairfax site, which we call uh, fxva.com, F as in Frank, xva.com. Go there, you can find out lots more about the South County area and what we call Potomac Banks and what we're hoping everybody does, which is exploring Fairfax South. It is vital to get your vision and help us get the right vision for the workhouse and ensure that we maximize its potential to the fullest. I want to thank, frankly, so many people who've been working hard to make this happen. Uh, start with Lauren uh, Shirley and Joe uh, Salentano, of the, of the VMDO architects and the rest of the project consulting team. We have clearly the workhouse master plan stakeholder committee, which has been very involved. Leon uh, Socia and the Workhouse Arts Foundation and their, is, their participation has been fantastic. Rachel uh, Flynn is a deputy county executive and Brian Hill is the county executive. They worked not only to, sit, to get the funding that we needed to do this study, but also been very involved with, with the conversations. And thank you all, thank you all of you for your collaboration, dedication, commitment, and frankly, just helping to us to create and hopefully and ultimately realize our community's vision uh, to deliver this project to the people of the Mount Vernon district and, and especially the people in, in uh, South Fairfax, um, because we think it will be a huge center for all of Northern Virginia and, and potentially the broader Washington metropolitan and, and East Coast area. So thank you all very much, uh, particularly the businesses and uh, the community and local businesses, the South 
Fairfax Chamber. Of course, the South County Federation has been very involved with every part of this. The arts organizations, the artists, uh, your input is vital to this, the success of this vision and to helping us identify and realize it. So above and beyond, and by all means, maybe I should say, please stay engaged in this process. Please share, please make sure we hear your voices. There's lots of different ways to do that. They'll talk about doing that. We're trying to create a vision that will we can realize in the next 20 or 30 years. And that key part of, of doing that is helping you, helping us find out what that is so we in turn can make it happen for you. So great opportunity to start this meeting. I'm gonna kind of be in the background for a bit and then I have another meeting I gotta to go to, but I wanted to thank everybody for being part of this and particularly um, my staff, the Chris team we're in, as well as uh, Nick Reinhardt, our two people that have been very involved from this from the very beginning. They're actually on here. They're gonna to continue to be actively engaged, not only with the meeting today, but, it, but on into the future. So uh, thank you and look forward to hearing your voices. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a great welcome and such a great um, context setting for what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, I'll just reiterate um, my thanks for joining tonight and for being willing to lend your voice um, to this process. Um, we've we've already been hearing from a lot of different groups and of course our stakeholder group is, um, uh, is wide reaching, um, but it's really important that we hear your voices and um, there are a few different ways to do that. So while tonight is gonna be more us sharing where we are with the project, um, we're gonna offer you um, both an, another opportunity to take the survey. We've already issued um, a short response to tonight's meeting. And um, if you have other comments about how you'd like to uh, work with us or provide your feedback, we're all ears for that too. Okay. Uh, so just by way of introducing ourselves, um, uh, BMDO is leading the architecture and planning portion of this project. Uh, Joe and I are on the phone tonight, as well as Martine, um, and our colleague Newport is not joining tonight, but she's been actively involved. Um, we also have um, a transportation consultant, Theron Piers. Um, Catherine and Anjali have been helping us. Uh, land design, who's doing the civil and landscape component. Um, you may have met Susan and Stephanie. Um, or seeing their faces, um, some of you, and then HRNA advisors who are looking at the market analysis and hopefully will be um, continuing to be involved in a financial feasibility study, um, Stan and Elizabeth, and cost estimators, Downey and Scott. Um, as Supervisor Stork mentioned, um, we have a wonderful stakeholder committee uh, who we've met with a uh, four or five times now um, through some virtual meetings and an in-person charrette. Uh, the representatives from across the uh, Fairfax County administration um, who have a lot of involvement um, in projects in this area um, in the past. So they have a lot of deep knowledge uh, that we've been learning from, as well as um, Leon, Tim, Kevin, and Caroline from the Workhouse Arts Foundation Board. Um, and I think quite a few of you are on are on tonight. Um, as a, this schedule is slightly out of date, but um, just to give you an overview of what our process has been, um, we went through a um, initial um, existing conditions and research phase um, that we call due diligence. Um, so we spent a few months really getting to know the campus, visiting the site, uh, reading through a lot of documentation and understanding the historical context that is so important to this campus. Um, and then we spent some time uh, working with the stakeholder group, doing site analysis, um, the market study and the transportation analysis to um, further understand the site and get a sense uh, from all of the stakeholders what this project wants to be in the future. And that's what we're gonna um, share with you tonight. Um, we are currently starting the refining the vision where we are working on developing a few options for the master plan. And I can talk a little bit more about that later. And then the fourth and final phase will be developing the final master plan. So this is our this is the first time we're sharing with the public um, what the project is all about. And there will be another opportunity at the end of this phase where, we're, where we will share with you the options that we've developed for your input. Um, some images here from our charrette with the stakeholders on May 20th, um, where that whole big group of 20 uh, came together at the Workhouse Arts Foundation to 
um, really articulate what the challenges and opportunities were here on the campus, uh, what people's expectations were, uh, what what people were holding as um, what they were envisioning for the campus. Um, I, even though a lot of it had been articulated before, this was a really good opportunity to get people to um, put things down on paper or really start to compare ideas and see how all of it could come together on the site. Um, we also sent out um, about maybe a month and a half ago um, a survey that went out to the uh, I think the 35,000 person mailing list of, for the Workhouse Arts Foundation. And I think it was up on the website and mailed out to various community groups as well. So hopefully um, all of you saw that email come through and have been able to provide your input that way. Um, the I think we've had roughly 358 responses. So I haven't read every single word of um, all of those responses. It was a lot of open-ended questions, um, but we've read through a lot of them and we really appreciate all the input that's been given so far. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on the schedule slide, um, we passed through the uh, really a phase where we were working on just understanding the site and um, spent the last few months uh, building this uh, vision report. And now we're moving into this options phase. Okay, about the campus. Um, so I'm guessing that if you're here tonight, you already know a little bit about this wonderful place and Supervisor Stork shared a little bit more. Um, but here, just a, a quick snapshot of um, what the campus looks like today. Um, here's an image from the one of the larger events, uh, Brewfest, uh, the famous love statue here in the middle of the historic quad. Uh, this is an image from the groundbreaking of the, um, the renovation of W13 and 15, which will um, become a, a tenant space for a brewery, hopefully, and a cafe. Um, and an image from the Lucy Burns Museum. Um, there's a lot going on on, on campus uh, between artist studios, um, a performance space, a small theater, um, classes that are offered, uh, the arts and the military initiative, um, the galleries that are open, the events rental space, um, and, all, and all of the special events that are hosted here on this campus from fireworks to uh, the car show. Um, the Halloween haunt. There's quite a lot going on on the campus. And Leanna, if there's anything else you want to say about your activities now, I'd definitely invite you to um, to um, share at this moment. Um, but I think what we what may not be apparent to everyone who visits the site is that uh, it's quite a large site, um, and not all of it is activated. It's 53 acres, and uh, we're really excited to see what the potential is to. Um, as Supervisor Stork was saying, even more, what all can this place be? Um, a little bit about the, the history. Um, this is a series of um, images uh, or diagrams showing the development of the campus over time. Um, it was initially built in the 1920s and, thir and 30s, um, really as a, um, as a prison, but as one that was geared more towards rehabilitation. And of course, it was connected to the, the much larger site. Um, the Occoquan Workhouse was connected to the much larger site as a, the agricultural lands that the, um, that the imprisoned people were working. Um, in the 40s and 50s, a few more buildings were, um, were built, uh, one more within the historic quad. This is the only one uh, from that era that's still surviving today. Um, in the 60s and 70s, um, a few more buildings were built. Um, you can see some of the remnants of this one still today. Um, in the 80s and 2000s, um, remarkably, um, the buildings were actually constructed in the middle of the quad. Um, so it was quite heavily built up. And then when they county um, when the land transferred to the county in the early 2000s um, that was most of that was all demolished and um, and then through some subsequent renovations and site work um, we arrive at the campus we have today with a lot of the parking and um, really just um, you know a lot of the non-historically significant buildings demolished and only the ones standing today are all historically significant Uh, 
Um, the architectural features, you might just think of the of the quad buildings. Here's W12 and their really iconic um, brick architecture. Here's the head house of the dining hall. And then of course the colonnade, um, but there are quite a lot of other buildings on the campus that um, will be part of the life of the future um, campus. Here's the uh, the barn and the um, the former gymnasium with its large glossy windows. And here's the power plant. And all of these buildings, um, we know, and you know, there's there are more. I don't know how much each of you have explored the campus. Um, most of the activity is confined to the the historic quad. So as we imagine the future of the campus, we're starting to imagine what some of these other historic buildings can be. Um, and as I as I mentioned, most of or all of the buildings, I think, with the exception of the um, of the guard towers, are considered historically significant. So you'll see that um, that right now the we're assuming that all of those will remain in place in the final master plan. Um, this is a diagram showing what. Uh, all the different activities that are happening in the quad in their multicolors. Uh, I think this is nicely representative of the of the wide range of things happening uh, between the the museum and the art of movement program uh, and the the art the resident artist studios, um, fiber arts, painting arts, the glass studio and the ceramics studio. Such a wide range of things going on, and then here, as we mentioned, thirteen and fifteen will be a really nice addition to that life in the um, in the center of campus um, with food and beverage amenities. Um, but as I said, the campus is 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 a lot larger than just that historic quad, fifty three acres. Most a lot of it is vegetated, um, and and perhaps you've. Um, Perhaps you've wandered down this trail and into some of the neighboring trails um, or connected along Workhouse Road and experienced some of this um, beautiful site. I think the master plan is also um, hoping to figure out how to best take advantage of that beautiful landscape. Um, there is a historic ball field here on the site. Um, perhaps you visited it. And that is also a, a site that we're hoping to preserve. Uh, the experience of the site now is largely shaped by this border, which is um, really formed by the guard towers, some of the the cross um, the cross county trail, a steep drop off in grade, and um, and the vegetation. So I think that really shapes how you how we see the site. Um, and then of course there are some um, important views to preserve. Most importantly, from the quad to the to Ox Road. And I think as we, um, as surrounding properties develop, especially with the proposed Fairfax Peak, um, that's also an important consideration in how we uh, think about this edge of the grounds and what possible connections there are to Fairfax Peak. We'd love your input on that point. Um, so moving a little bit outwards from this site, uh, one thing that, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, but this site um, is, very much um, shaped by its history within that larger um, DC prison property. And a lot of those properties have now turned into large scale, um, not very uh, visitation intensive uh, uses. So for instance, the, the quarry or the water treatment plants or the landfill, all of these are long-term tenants um, that don't invite a lot of traffic. So there's some perception that it's very isolated here. Um, but I think as Supervisor Stork was saying, a lot of that, um, some of those uses are changing. There's the golf course and more, much more residential um, coming closer to the campus. So there's a lot of opportunities um, here even Despite, um, despite some of those surrounding uses. Um, as I mentioned here, there's quite a lot of residential, maybe raise your hand if you're one of the people who live in that neighborhood. Um, and then of course, looking at the, you know, zooming out a little bit further um, as we think about connectivity and how to overcome that sense of isolation. Um, oh, I see, I see one hand, welcome. Um, here's a mapping of um, public transit networks and bus lines and 
you can see none of those extend over to the Workhouse Arts Center campus. So a little bit of um, disconnection to overcome and as we think about what other kinds of vehicular or, or non-vehicular and uh, transit methods um, we can support. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit about the campus. Um, those of you who have your hands raised now, are you residents or do you have a question? If you have a question, I'll just ask you to put it into the into the chat. Um, okay, uh, here we go. What is the master plan vision? So, uh, as a consultant group, I think we entered this project with um, you know the understanding that we have. Uh, while Fairfax County is our client, the Workhouse Arts Foundation is the, currently the primary user of this campus and um, both have really powerful goals for what this site can be. Most of those are very much overlapping and in line, but they are also um, distinct. Uh, so from the Workhouse Arts Foundation, they want to become a regional and national arts destination. They want to provide facilities for the creation and experience of all forms of art. They want to interact with the public and bring access to the arts to all. And um, action items, how that uh, translates to some big moves. They want to provide a large scale music venue, a professional theater, an education center for performing arts, an event center, center a large scale event center, and more studios, more studio space. Um, Fairfax County, Oh, is somebody drawing on the screen? I didn't know anybody else could do that. I'm going to clear that. OK. All right, Fairfax County goals. Um, meet the recognized demand for more high quality arts programming available to all Fairfax County residents. Um, I've taken a look at the uh, Fairfax County Arts Master Plan, and there's a clear demand for that. And um, and I think that this that the growth in this area in particular is very much supported by the county. They want to become um, this campus to become a regional destination and to provide amenities to the Lorton community. Uh, meaningfully preserve history while transforming experience of the former prison. Uh, there's the responsibility on the county's part. Um, some things that came across with the um, with the land deed, uh, but a responsibility to preserve this history and to preserve these buildings and tell that story. Um, they want to plan for appropriate development beyond the arts. So beyond uh, what the Workhouse Arts Foundation is going to build, what, um, what other development can happen on this campus and um, to help support the needs um, articulated above. Um, and then, of course, very importantly, to support the Workhouse Arts Foundation in becoming financially self-sufficient and, and generating revenue for Fairfax County. So we've been looking at these um, and you'll see these themes uh, throughout the presentation, um, these three focuses, the arts, community, and history, and how those connect to each other and connect um, on the Workhouse campus. So why are we doing the master plan now? Um, it's, some of these reasons are probably very apparent, but for the historical site, um, Waiting any longer to rehabilitate existing buildings may narrow options for use and preservation and increase the expense of doing so. Uh, for the Workhouse Arts Foundation, uh, they are ready to meet that regional demand for high quality arts programming and scale up their ability to generate revenue. Um, their growth is in, currently inhibited by the, um, by the current facilities and they're ready to grow. And for the community, um, the Lorton District is currently working on a vision plan for future development. And um, as Supervisor Stork mentioned, there's a lot of development already in action, and these efforts should be aligned and coordinated. So um, on the next two pages, um, we've tried to consolidate or condense down um, some of these uh, principles for our work. Um, 
into, into eight main principles. And we'd love your feedback on these. These are evolving as we move through the process and we wanna make sure this captures um, what the community needs and wants. So to promote the, the first principle uh, is to promote the arts vision. Um, give an arts focused character and function to the campus. That is um, you know, in contrast to maybe the um, Liberty Crest development um, this is very different and wants to um, really have the character of an arts, um, an arts destination. Uh, support the strategic plan of the Workhouse Arts Foundation to grow into a nationally recognized arts institution and provide art services to all Fairfax County residents. Second, uh, to create a vibrant community destination. So beyond that arts, focus uh, to create a live workspace for the Lorton community and for the entire region to engage with the arts. Create human scale places that prioritize individual and community health and well-being and embrace smart growth principles and processes. Three, to enhance historic character, preserve historical, ecological and cultural assets and resources with sensitivity. Um, this seems really primary and we've heard it from you know, across all groups that we've spoken to that um, this is of course a must and um, not just the history, but also the ecological resources. And then uh, fourth, uh, support access and connection, support site accessibility, community connectivity and regional draw. So how overcoming that sense of isolation. So the first, these first four, four principles align with that kind of triangle diagram, arts, community, history and connection. And then the second, um, the second four principles are kind of about that triple bottom line, um, people, planet, and profit. Uh, so contribute to financial sustainability. Uh, through this development, we can enhance the economic value of the property. Um, we can leverage it to do so much more for the community. Uh, we need to provide a clear implementation path. Um, this needs to be achievable support diversification of revenue for Fairfax County and Workhouse Arts Foundation. And we it's a strong value to prioritize the local economy and residents. So when we're making decisions about um, what happens, there's the desire to make decisions that are gonna benefit the local community. Provide an equity forward process and design. We want to advance equity wherever possible throughout the process. Um, as a foundation of the design itself. So not just in how we interact with you, of course, um, that's a, a means for advancing equity, but also in the design decisions. Um, how can we support that all along the way? Seven, protect natural resources, um, protect, enhance, and restore valuable natural resources on site and consider impacts to interconnected ecosystems and watersheds. So we do have, you know, we're working with a site with some history. It is not a green field. Um, there are already systems in place, um, and uh, but we also have some wetlands and new development will certainly require some um, new considerations for how we deal with water and, and storm. So hopefully we're not just um, developing more, but we're also preserving um, and uh, restoring some of those, um, some of those ecologies. Um, and then of course, be achievable and aligned. Uh, this needs to be realistic. We can envision to the moon and back, um, but we need to create something that's realistic to be built, built affordable um, and prioritized uh, to give the county um, the ability to move forward on this plan as soon as it's complete. And of course, aligned with county policies and planning, there's already a lot of thought that's gone into how um, places like this should be developed. And so we're of course, reading all of those documents and aligning our work. Okay, take a small breather. Um, so in, um, that's, that's really our foundation for this work and where we landed, um, that it's evolved since we finished the due diligence phase, but, um, but that forms the core of what, what this master plan wants to achieve. And we would love your feedback on on that as its own as its own piece. Um, 
so the next piece that's informing our the the master plan development is uh, analysis. Um, as I mentioned, we have a transportation uh, consultant who completed a transportation analysis, a um, advising firm that completed a market analysis, and then together with land design, um, the MDO completed a site analysis. And I'm not going to share with you everything that. Um, uh, those are fairly robust documents, and those are available on the county website for this project. Um, if you'd like to access those, um, I'm actually not sure if the final version has been posted, but if it's not there now, it will be very shortly, and you can access the, the full reports there. There's a lot of detail, um, both in the transportation analysis, a lot of data there, and a lot of background on the market analysis. So um, please check that out if you are interested. I'm just going to give fairly brief summaries this evening. Um, OK, on transportation, um, I think what um, is fairly uh, self-evident about this site is that it's bounded on the west side by um, a fairly fast road, Ox Road. Um, it posted speed limits of 55 miles per hour, but um, most or only 85% of people go under that. Um, so traffic does move um, quite quick on that road, and uh, that really impacts how people access um, the workhouse campus. There is a shared use path here along um, along Ox Road and along um, Workhouse Road. But there are not uh, very many pedestrian crossings. This is not a very pedestrian friendly road, and um, certainly a workhouse road could be could be more pedestrian friendly. Um, this is 40 miles per hour, but also still a fairly fast road. And I think people mostly prefer to move within that shared use path. Um, there's also the cross county trail along the east side of the site, which connects into the neighboring mountain bike trails. And as we mentioned earlier, there's no existing transit connections um, to the workhouse currently. Um, circulation, there are three main entrances to the workhouse. Only one of them is actually a full access um, point where you can turn in both directions. The other ones are right in, right out only. And um, not very pedestrian friendly. The, there are great sidewalks and pedestrian crossings within the campus, um, but really only contained or confined to the historic quad and the parking lots. Um, access to the rest of the site is um, fairly informal. Um, as you can see here, uh, the main historic quad is very surrounded by um, a rather large sea of parking, which is very necessary for the large events that are hosted here on campus, but which um, are rarely full during the daytime and which um, don't create a very inviting atmosphere um, on the campus. Okay. Um, a few quick highlights from the uh, market analysis. So like I said, this was a very robust document and I would invite you to look at it um, once it's posted online. But a few key takeaways um, uh, for the, oh, and actually I should, I should preface this by saying that um, the goal of this study, the end, the end goal of the, of the study was to look at the surrounding marketplace um, and find out how much residential and how much retail this site could um, reasonably or uh, successfully support over the next 10 years. So this was an information gathering exercise. It's, um, it's not necessarily what is recommended to be on the site, um, but it is a, we know that housing and retail are possibilities and we needed to know how much was, um, would be absorbed by the market. So take this, um, in that in that regard. Okay. Um, declining vacancy and positive net absorption. Um, so there basically is a steady decline in vacancy um, in multifamily housing um, and all new um, new deliveries have been absorbed. And though there was a little bit um, in 2020 that really had to do with the pandemic 
and doesn't seem to be a long-term trend. So overall new housing is being uh, purchased and rented. Um, rapid growth in sales prices and rents, perhaps you're acutely aware of this, um, being residents yourself of this area. Um, they, the sales prices and rents are less than that over, um, over the Fairfax County average or under the Fairfax County average, but they are growing at a higher rate. So that suggests that this area is growing in popularity and demand. Um, but that is also a challenge um, because it can lead to affordability issues. Um, range of recent multifamily deliveries. So there are um, quite a few uh, large deliveries of multifamily uh, units within a 10 minute drive. And um, these are in a range of prices from the townhome style apartments to, um, to the nicer riverfront apartments in amenity rich communities. Um, so that speaks to um, the, I guess the viability that other developers are seeing the possibilities in this area and creating large de deliveries. And also um, is a consideration in thinking about what kind of competition there is um, and how we might differentiate from, from those offerings. Um, so that's really part of point number four as well, that the a lot of um, development in the pipeline means that we need to be um, careful about how um, about the housing that's delivered on the Workhouse Arts Campus, if it's um, if we choose to do that, um, how it might offer something slightly different from the other offerings um, in the area. Um, key takeaways: retail. Um, So um, largely food and beverage market, um, there's a suggestion that we could, that the best thing, the best kind of retail to, so there's very much a clear um, perception that we need to add more food and beverage to this site, that uh, it needs amenities to support the arts activities on site. And, um, and there's certainly, um, uh, the ability to do that and, and the study shows that we can add food and beverage, um, but it is something that is um, that there's more of that within the um, neighboring retail. And so there's a, a, uh, the opportunity to add other retail um, types to the site as well, um, specifically ones that might complement uh, the arts um, uh, the arts uses on campus like craft shops, bookstores, antique shops, gift shops, etc. Um, right now, there are uh, some vacancy within the area, but um, the thinking is that uh, that is attributed to some rather large deliveries arriving on the market um, most uh, very recently, and that those will be um, absorbed, and um, and so that suggests to this market analysis that we would just need to phase the opening of those retail um, those retail offerings appropriately. Um, so within the study area, uh, most of the uh, most of what's in the development pipeline is concentrated near the um, transit um, at the center of Lorton um, and near the Woodbridge Amtrak station and um, so, as I mentioned earlier, the, we have a unique opportunity here to make what's offered here really part of the arts focus and um, help contribute to that sense of place on the site um, rather than detracting from it. Um, where is? Okay, so where the study landed um, is a proposal. So this says proposed phase development program and recommended, but I would again say this is not um, this is not what the full team or Fairfax County is rep is recommending for the site. This is what the market study um, suggested. 
Um, so for multifamily, a total of 20, 250 to 350 units um, could be absorbed. And the, the precedent that was uh, looked at to arrive at that number was a three to four story garden style apartment, perhaps 20% of the units um, reserved for artists um, at an affordable rate. And the suggestion is for that to be unrolled in two phases. Um, townhomes, the site could, um, could offer 20 to 30 three-story townhomes in two to three phases. Um, I will say that's probably somewhat unlikely um, to offer for sale um, residential on this site. And retail, a total of 20,000 to 30,000 square feet of food and beverage uh, and other retail. And that would be a mix of you know, small um, full service restaurants and small convenience store style. Okay. Um, thank you for bearing with me as I make it through, not my report, um, my colleague's report. Um, so this is all information that we're taking. And I think, um, you know, since, since we received the results of this study, uh, maybe about a, a month or six weeks ago, um, we've started, the way we're using this information is to uh, basically use this as an upper bracket of what we might test on the site. So as we're developing our options, we're, we're exploring, okay, what does it take to get up to that much? Is that too much? Is it not enough, et cetera? So, um, so again, take it with a grain of salt, but that's how we're using this study. Okay, areas of focus. Um, so we like to think of this as, um, this is the challenges section. Uh, this is hopefully articulating what we've heard from, um, from the stakeholder group and from the county about what we're encountering here on the site. And again, looking at that through these three lenses of arts, community, history, um, and connection. So focusing on the arts, um, the financial model, uh, there is some uncertainty about uh, the long-term economic viability of the artist and residency model. Um, right now, what's there is you know, sort of similar to the torpedo factory. And um, while the artist and residency program is um, wonderful and really robust and brings a lot of opportunity to the site, um, there's, it could be a lot more. There are many more, more opportunities to connect people to the arts. So the center is currently not taking full advantage of the site's opportunities. Uh, my son is saying goodnight to me, hold on. Excuse me. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, the there are a lot of vacant buildings. Um, there is a tremendous landscape, all of which could be contributing to um, how the Workhouse Arts Foundation and other tenants might use the site. Um, while the center already offers a wide range of programming, uh, they need to scale up venues in order to realize a higher revenue from each offering. They're ready to do that, and the campus is limiting them. Um, program limitations. The Workhouse Arts Center, um, they have already clearly identified the need for a large scale music venue, the professional theater, an event center, music and dance education center, some industrial arts shops and studios, uh, culinary arts kitchen and more storage. And all of this is in addition to what they are already operating. Um, there's no, there's currently no space for these um, or not rather, sorry, not no space, no rehabilitated appropriate space for them at the moment. Um, the center's mission emphasizes bringing interaction with art to the public. Um, that's really at the core of their mission is, is interaction. And right now the campus and what they're able to, what programming they are able to offer limits who can participate in the arts. They can reach so many more people um, in the future. Uh, and visibility. While some large scale art imagery, um, as you can see here in this image, um, does go a long way um, to make the center's activities visible, there's actually very little transparency between the outside and the inside, and you can't really see the activities that are happening, the actual art making. So we want to make that visible. Um, and the 
art presence on campus is limited to only those rehabilitated buildings around the quad, but does not use the exterior campus on the broader, um, the exterior spaces on the broader campus. Okay, within the um, history theme, uh, vacancy. The vacant buildings are a security and safety concern. There are um, people sneaking in to go into the vacant buildings and there's a concern about vandalism and of course the safety of um, people who do go into those. And the vac that same vacancy negatively impacts the perception of life and energy on the campus. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel nice to be around those buildings when they could be full of life. Um, unsuitability, the historic buildings um, do not meet the modern current programmatic needs and lifestyles envisioned for the campus and they give a sense of being stuck or fixed in time. Interpretation. The spectrum of historical significance is not cur currently represented. So um, while the buildings themselves that um, will be preserved and rehabilitated um, represent a, one aspect of the site's history and a, and a defined period of historical significance, we know that there are many more stories and many more um, parts of the site um, that should also be interpreted. Expense. Uh, the condition of some of the buildings on the campus are rapidly deteriorating and depreciating, and they will only become more expensive to rehabilitate. Unique placemaking. placemaking. Um, What's already happening there um, can continue to happen in these um, in these beautiful historic buildings. There is that unrealized potential in leveraging the relationship between the art and these historic spaces and that special combination that um, you know only we can only imagine at the moment. And of course, the historic buildings do offer us uh, quite a few restrictions. Um, the historic preservation tax credit structure is complicated and, and limiting for adaptive reuse. So it is, it is quite challenging to um, rehabilitate these buildings to take on a new, um, a new type of program. Okay, focusing on the community. Um, in the overall site organization, um, it's a very suburban experience. Visitors um, must move across that large expanse of parking and move past that solid perimeter of the main quad buildings before they achieve that sense of arrival in the center of the quad. Um, and then in contrast to that, there's actually no strong sense of cohesion or connection among the buildings outside the quad. So you have this really strong, um, a strong sense within the historic quad buildings and then the rest are sort of far flung, unoccupied and not connected. Program and space limitations. Um, the current facilities do not support the wide range of programming uh, that the Workhouse Arts Foundation wants to offer and it's limiting their growth. There are inadequate interior gathering spaces and no large scale spaces for performances, rehearsals or events. So. If you noticed in the, um, the, the program items that have been identified, the large event center, the uh, music venue, the performance education spaces in the theater, all of those would add to that portfolio of large scale spaces. And the existing exterior gathering spaces are uninviting and lack landscaping. So there's a strong perception that the quad um, is while it's appropriate for many things, there's no shade, there's no planting, it's rather austere um, and it could be better suited. And that's uh, the other landscape spaces. While there's plenty of space, um, they aren't set up to be gathering spaces. Um, and then amenities, um, which was very resounding on the community survey. Uh, there are no currently no food and beverage and other retail amenities on the site that will be, um, that is uh, underway at, at W13 and 15. Um, but still there, I imagine there will be demand for more in the final bill out. Um, and there's also a sense that there's only a single reason for visiting the campus. Um, and that's the Workhouse Arts Center. Um, a mixed use environment would in contrast, um, provide people with a lot of different reasons for visiting the site, whether it's to visit a restaurant or come to recreate, um, et cetera. 
Okay. And then focusing on the connections. So as mentioned before, the site is isolated from other amenities. Um, it's really uh, Interstate 95 forms both a, a real and a perceived barrier between the center and, um, and the other commercial centers in Lorton. It's perceived to be far away and remote. Um, and also, as I touched on before, the site is surrounded by these large scale, low density, long-term uses. No public transit connecting the campus. Um, the high speed of the roadways discourages casual stops. Um, by the time you see the sign and the entrance, you've already blown past on Ox Road. And bicycle, pedestrian, and trail connections um, are not formalized or optimized for safety. Um, while they exist, they could be uh, they could be made more safe and more obvious with better signage and orientation. And um, disconnected. Um, from I-95 traffic and Amtrak auto train riders. So uh, while we don't, while there's a little bit of a, we don't want I-95 folks to be cutting through here, we do want to maybe capture their attention and um, bring them to the campus. And similarly with the auto train riders. And of course, there's a lack of signage and art along Ox Road and Workhouse Way. Um, we've heard loud and clear that people want an electronic sign to show what's going on, and that's a bit of a zoning hurdle to get over. Okay, so pro our program understanding. I'm looking at the time, and I'm seeing that I think we will, I think we should be able to hit 8.30 to wrap up the presentation. Okay. Um, okay, program, okay. So again, these four themes. Okay, um, at the charrette, we posed a question, what if, and uh, really to kind of get us thinking outside the box of what, um, what could you, what crazy thing could you possibly imagine for this site? Or what's the, what's the thing that um, would really make it all worth it to you? What's the, what's the image in your mind when you see a really successful campus? Um, what if we could achieve that? Um, so, oops, um, we tried to capture all of that and we got ideas like a Vienna to Lorton bike event or an adopt a garden program or art on the guard towers. Um, so that was fairly exciting. And that was um, uh, one of the activities that help us, helped us to understand not just the core programming, but also um, what else, what else could populate this 53 acre campus and really optimize it. Um, so to articulate this, you know, we there were a few really sticky points that were articulated through um, through this process and and we tried to flip these on their heads and and make them uh, vision statements for the campus. So, um, in the historic, in the history theme, um, we will continue to uniquely interpret the site's history through art. The campus must be a platform and infrastructure for art and storytelling. So we can imagine a place where the um, the venues um, really become the stage. Every uh, every aspect of the campus becomes a platform and an opportunity for the artists and the visitors on the site to create their own life and create their own art that does interpret that history. You can imagine some, an artist in residence there being able to use the historic structures as a backdrop for a storytelling and move from an indoor theater out onto a terrace and out into the site and start to be inspired by the site. So I think there's a sense of what kind of synergies can we create by making a, an environment rich with opportunity. On the community front, um, we will create something for everyone. The campus much must accommodate a rich variety of uses that allow it to be part of each resident's life. So how can this campus offer something to every resident, not just somebody who wants to come look at a gallery or buy a piece of art or visit an art studio, but how can everybody, young and old, uh, find a reason to come to this campus, how can it support and enrich every resident's life? 
um, connection, we will leverage the workhouse's position as a linchpin within Lorton and make the campus reach beyond its boundaries. The campus can and must reinforce historic and contemporary means of connection. So maybe we can find a way to look at um, at how the campus was historically connected and networked to the surrounding area and use that as inspiration for how the campus can now be connected um, uh, to the surrounding area. That historic population center that was connected to the agrarian uses, um, what clues can we derive from that here? Whether it's through the historic train connection or through um, ideas about um, demonstration projects and, um, and agriculture and um, industrial production. And then and contemporary means of connection. So the, um, all the different ranges of non-vehicular um, uh, transportation from scooters to um, bicycles um, to horses. Um, and then art, we will realize our arts mission while also developing other complementary uses on site. Uh, the campus must offer unique arts focused retail housing and recreation experiences. So again, pulling on that theme of if there, there, are, there may be other uses, it may be a mixed use um, uh, campus, but how can each of those reinforce and help enhance the overall arts focus of the campus? So um, a little bit about who and what, this was another exercise from the charrette, who is currently on the campus and who will be coming to campus? Who do we want to come? Who, do, who should we invite to the campus? Who can we imagine may have a reason to attend? And my takeaway from this, that it's everybody. <laughs> and um, it was, it's also a good exercise as we, as we develop options to test those options against this list of people is there is there a um, something for everyone? All of those people, are we designing a place for them in this um, in this master plan? And of course, the the current events that are already happening on the site and what those future events might be that we can design spaces for. So um, the program we're looking at. Um, uh, using to develop these options can be broken into three main categories. So the core arts programs that are the heart of the future campus and the main attractions. So that's shown in pink here, the event center, the professional theater, that large scale music venue and the education center, as well as the culinary arts demonstration kitchen. Um, and the secondary amenity and mixed use programs that provide support and vibrancy to the campus as visitors. So that would be the artist housing, the shops, the food and beverage, a nightlife venue, some of that maker space and industrial art studios, maybe some co-working space. All of that is going to drive a synergy between people visiting the campus um, for the arts programming and those um, supporting programs. And then a third category is those ancillary programs that make the campus that much more special. So is there an opportunity for short-term rentals? Is there a small-scale outdoor amphitheater in the woods? Is there an arboretum? Is there a shared um, museum or cultural center with Fairfax County? How can we embed gallery space in the landscape, create an art trail, et cetera? Uh, so those arts program needs and um, some of this, I don't know if any of this is familiar to you all through your previous interaction with the Workhouse Arts Foundation, but I'll outline the um, those four main um, arts venues that have been articulated um, as goals by the Workhouse Arts Foundation. The music barn, um, that's the redevelopment of the existing barn and the space to the south of the barn and some of this smaller adjacent garage and agricultural buildings. And that could be turned into a new build of a large amphitheater pavilion um, for large scale music performances, two to 3000 um, patrons at a time and um, used you know, as an indoor outdoor space used seven months out of the year. Um, the event center, 
uh, that's the existing W1 dining or the former dining hall. Um, into, that would be a redevelopment of it into a flexible large scale event space. So um, you can imagine that being used for weddings or conventions or even indoor musical performances um, could be sit down or uh, standing room types of events. And that program could include a pre-function space, a catering kitchen, and even um, allow for the um, culinary arts education space um, that they really want to offer. Um, and you can see that, that that can hold quite a few people, three to 400 seated, 700 to 800 standing. And then the music and dance education center. So, um, and, and the, the assumptions about which building those go into, those are very good assumptions from the Workhouse Arts Foundation. Um, but we have been asked to, you know, really validate or question those, um, those assumptions as part of our study. Um, so 17 and 18 um, could be developed into an education center for music and dance. It would house some large recital rooms as well as practice spaces. Um, and then the, a professional theater, and that would be in the, the only building on the quad, um, the only smaller building on the quad, of course, W1 um, for the event center. Um, but W12 could be renovated into a professional theater that could hold up to 400 um, patrons. Um, as part of our study, we're drawing on a lot of different precedent facilities for a variety of reasons. Um, we're looking at places like Camp North End um, in North Carolina and the River Arts District um, in Asheville, which uh, both take um, historic properties and um, that are being used for um, art galleries and um, production spaces um, with retail and amenities and restaurants um, combined and have turned into really vibrant um, entertainment and recreation spaces. Um, that's a, a kind of vibe that has been articulated as an ideal for this place. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, and maybe not the other end of the spectrum, but um, it's another point in the constellation, um, the Strathmore Theater with its um, very high end, or um, I guess nationally known um, high quality uh, performance and um, and practice spaces um, that we aspire to also have on this campus. And Wolf Trap Farm Park, of course, um, is a beautiful example of a place that um, keeps uh, keeps that more rural landscape oriented space with the large music venue, with the restaurant. Uh, with the barns and the and the theater in the woods. It's a great precedent for how we could use the landscape space. Um, and um, we're looking at many precedents. So these are just a handful um, pulled out here, but wanting to give you a bit of a representation of things we're looking at. Um, Renaissance Square housing is a an artist housing. Um, that is one apartment building, but has um, arts focused amenities inside like a um, multi-purpose performance space and studio space um, inside. And then we're also looking at formal precedents. Um, this, the, the original design of this campus was inspired, um, it was built hundred years later, but um, inspired by UVA's academical village um, the, and the lawn. And so we're looking at um, that from a, uh, a form and, and flow standpoint as a very successful space designed for a completely different purpose. Um, their report, um, and I do apologize for these slides, not the most, um, all the slides except for the H and RNA ones are, are native to PowerPoint. And these are just images taken from that report. So I apologize for their, um, these pages being less accessible. Um, the temporary uses for site activation. So one important, um, so the Workhouse Arts Foundation is already doing this in a really robust way, uh, using the campus as it is, um, and being creative about how it uses the landscape space for um, for exciting events. Um, but work, but as the master plan unfolds, um, there will be new opportunities that arise. So we're looking at um, what we can accommodate in that interim period. 
and also looking at precedents that um, promote a sense of identity through art like Provincetown, Massachusetts and Taos, New Mexico and how that identity of art becomes embedded in place. Um, what characteristics and um, evolution over time lead to that. Okay, then take a breather to take a sip of water. Okay, I see lots of chat coming in, so I can't read that right now. I apologize, but we'll hopefully um, we'll address some of those at the end. Okay, development principles. So, as I said, we're we've wrapped up this visioning period, and um, and are moving into the options phase. And what I'm about to show you is uh, really how we've tried to map out. Um, map out what we've heard so far wants to be on the site um, into three categories, uh, framework, facilities, and programs, partnerships, and policies. And frameworks, um, and with the, we're gonna drill down into some detail here, but uh, frameworks is really about um, infrastructure and distributed systems. Facilities is about the build out, um, and what some of the larger chunks, what, what's gonna to happen to the buildings. And then programs, partnerships and policy, maybe self-explanatory, but about what's happening in these spaces and what opportunities there are for, um, for partnering and creating synergies with other entities. So we'll walk through these in some detail and I'll hope to do this um, to end at 8.30. Oh, and, and just as a, not so much a disclaimer as a information. Um, this is not what we think is definitely going to happen in the master plan. There's a lot of development yet to happen, but we hope that this is just capturing what has been expressed to us so far with a little bit of interpretation around, okay, where might this fit? What are some opportunities that we see? And so I want, we're putting this out here as, um, you know, if there's something that you don't like about this, that's something we want to hear. If there's something you do really like about it, we want to hear it as well. Um, there's a lot of ideas captured here, but um, but it's not, it's in no sh way, shape or form set in stone. Um, so it's a, it's a conversation starter as we move into options. Okay. Access and circulation. So four main points here, um, right size and consolidate parking, extend formal circulation network into the larger site to connect to new destinations, improve non-vehicular safety and access, and strategically organize, restrict, and zone vehicular circulation. So breaking that down a bit, um, right size and consolidate parking. Um, as we know, there's that sea of parking, it's taking up a lot of space. How can we um, make sure we have the right number of spaces, but also try to consolidate it and free up some of that space? So we see an opportunity to um, create a multi-level, um, partially below grade parking garage with a park on top at the north side of the site with a one-way, with potentially a one-way entry and exit loop. Um, this is an image of the, a project that um, the MDO, my firm, uh, designed and built in Arlington, Lubber Run Community Center, um, where this park is built completely over a parking garage. And there's an opportunity here where the site starts to slope down to do something similar to allow some program to be built on top uh, while maintaining a lot of open green space. And then corollary to that is to potentially limit parking on the south side of the site um, where that could be given over to other uses. Um, extend the formal circulation network into larger site to connect to de new destinations. So a few components here. Um, allowing access to the quad from the outside perimeter um, oops, here to create active frontage on the secondary roads. So these, um, the former dormitory buildings where the artist studios now are very solid along the outside perimeter. You can't see in, there are some secondary doors 
um, but you really need to go around to get into them. And it would be a great opportunity to activate those secondary streets to allow access. Um, formalize access to quad from the corners. Um, as the master plan is implemented, we think that these spaces to the north and south of W1 will become much more important. And instead of only accessing the quad from the west at the open end, that moving in and out uh, from those corners will become very important. And this image of the lawn, I think, um, was important in our understanding of how um, that space is mostly primarily accessed from these um, from these corners um, where there's uh, important green spaces outside of them. Um, create pedestrian oriented main street between the music barn and the theater lined with retail galleries and restaurants. So um, I guess I could flip ahead and show you, but this is the the barn that has been identified as a potential music venue. And this is the building that has been identified as a theater. So stretching between those two points is an opportunity for uh, this pedestrian oriented main street flanked by some retail. Um, connect new landscape destinations to the central quad area. So as we mentioned, the circulation network really is confined to this quad. But there's going to be many opportunities for um, landscape destinations throughout the whole 53 acres. And that network of, of complete sidewalks needs to extend out. That's represented by these purple dots here. Um, formalize the trail connection at Dairy Road. While you can connect from Dairy Road over to the um, other trails, um, it's not well marked. and um, it looks informal, like maybe you shouldn't be doing it. So uh, formalize that connection and, and really integrate those trail networks. And then um, explore options for a formal connection to the future Alpine X facility. And um, I don't think we have anything very solid in mind in terms of a real hard landscaped connection um, as that facility is so far out in the future. Um, but that's a strong desire to make that connection and see what kinds of opportunities there are for um, uh, visitors to that facility and visitors to this facility to be, a move, be able to move between them. Um, improve non vehicular safety and access. Slow, slowing down traffic on Ox Road um, is a very high priority of the stakeholder group, re potentially reducing that speed um, down to 40 and along a long stretch and then potentially even down to 25 um, right in front of the workhouse uh, campus. Um, that would be a, a, a pretty big hurdle to get over, a pretty big challenge. I don't, I think there would have to be a very strong case um, for VDOT to consider that, but um, it is something that um, we're hoping to build a case to do. Um, provide pedestrian friendly islands at, of, um, or bulb outs at surrounding intersections. So that's, um, here's an image of what that looks like that could really improve the intersection here at Patty's Court and around the Workhouse Road, Ox Road connection. Um, and locate network of bicycle racks at major destinations. There already are some nice bike, bike racks on the campus, but as the campus grows um, to make sure those make sense um, that you can um, arrive at anywhere within the campus and be able to park your bike. Okay, strategically organize, restrict, and zone vehicular circulation. So a couple things going on here. Um, there's an, so as I mentioned, this is the potential music barn, this is the potential theater, this is the potential event center, and this is the potential education center. So at each of these blue dots here, where you've got a nice cluster of entries to those major arts destinations. And we think a plaza here connecting three of those um, could be a really wonderful um, space and place of arrival. And this is an image of Lincoln Center, which is of course um, an overstatement, but a really wonderful urban plaza space um, that this could in a sense mimic. Um, provide shuttle from offsite parking during events. Uh, so there is some opportunity to 
um, of neighboring properties to have um, to have additional parking. Also, this triangle of space here is um, part of the workhouse arts. Um, sorry, the workhouse arts campus property. Um, so there could be offsite parking there. Um, we think we should evaluate a new entry point along Ox Road based on the final master plan design that could be here. It could be shared with the um, Aquaquan Park entrance and that um, could allow, depending on the kind of development on the south side of the site, uh, another access point to the campus. So we'll be looking at that. Um, and we want to consider the efficiency of distinct vehicular access zones for different uses and how, you know, potentially concentrating uh, vehicular activity at the north side of the site um, could allow or free up, um, not to take it away at the south part of the site, but to concentrate the heavy activity to the north and allow for um, a more casual and pedestrian friendly use on the south part of the site. I think this idea number five has been nixed, um, but we had thought about changing um, changing the left uh, to allow a left turn here. I think it's too close to the intersection for that to happen. Okay, um, a second part of framework, uh, focusing on landscape infrastructure, branding and wayfinding. Uh, so the four big points, maximize functional and aesthetic planting throughout the campus. Uh, create a comprehensive branding and wayfinding network, extend infrastructure and program throughout the space, and manage stormwater proactively and transparently. Uh, so planting, um, there's very little of it now, and I think there is a, um, a sense that the that the character of the landscape now is part of the historic character of of the campus. Um, and I think that's an idea that um, there's a strong desire to, to challenge that. Um, you know, it's not a prison anymore. Uh, so what is an appropriate way to incorporate more planting and a more um, hospitable landscape on the site? Um, so number one, creating a comprehensive landscaping strategy along both sides of Ox Road. Um, so here the green stripe line is indicating, um, you know, right now it's very informal. There's some grass, some shrubbery, um, but creating a, a, a formalized landscape along that boundary um, could signify that you've arrived at the campus and be a wonderful entry. Um, we will investigate the possibility of planting shade trees on the quad. Uh, there was a time in the in the site's history when there were some trees on the west side of of the quad. Um, so there could be historical precedent for that. Um, this is an image from UVA's lawn where you can see how a space of um, similar size and scale is really enhanced by the presence of, of the large shade trees. Um, plant gardens with native species and medicinal or agricultural plants um, between the quad buildings. So um, indicated here in these in green as the space between those dormitory buildings. Um, some of them could be used for art making and um, some of them that are uh, more about pedestrian connections could be um, planted with beautiful landscaping um, that maybe speaks to some of the historical uses, um, the historical agricultural use of the surrounding site. Um, create a comprehensive branding and wayfinding network. So a few components to that. Um, there's a lot going on in the site, or we hope there will be. And so uh, we recommend providing a comprehensive signage across the campus um, that can touch on multiple themes, the wayfinding, the history, um, teaching about history, um, nature, and art, um, and have all of that uh, blended together in um, uniform brand. Um, provide electronic signage at each entry point um, in it, and in advance of entries along Ox Road and Workhouse Way. So indicated here in purple, we likely won't get all of those to be electronic signs, um, uh, but having a, a formal signage network at each of those points, hopefully one electronic sign um, would be a goal. Um, create a series of sculptures along Ox Road to enhance visibility. Um, so some, this is a, um, Oh my gosh, Klaus, I'm not gonna remember his last name. Um, 
very famous sculptor. Uh, this is the uh, typewriter eraser at the um, Olympic Sculpture Park in Seattle. And along this roadway, it's very prominent and uh, something to that effect could really um, create a sense of excitement along the roadway. Uh, and launch a brand refresh concurrent to the first large scale implementation. Okay, extending that infrastructure and program throughout open space. So a lot of uh, a lot of detail here, as I was mentioning before. There's um, there's so much opportunity here aside from the um, large core program areas to develop a richness in the landscape. Um, so the in teal here, the um, those art making courtyards between the quad buildings. Um, and between potential um, live work residences um, could really go a long way towards um, allowing art making to be on display and a place where um, people can approach and see that happening. Um, develop on-site art and nature trail network. So the little teal dots here are indicating potential outdoor large scale sculpture and a trail network connecting those that really um, picks up along that roadside uh, network goes moves between the guard towers that could also be incorporated along that cross country trail. Um, the former sewage treatment um, tanks are pretty exciting elements that could be incorporated into that outdoor sculpture um, and land somewhere at that public plaza, and that could. Um, that could move people from the arts venues um, throughout the landscape. Um, create interactive art pieces at key gathering points. So um, perhaps on that elevated park or along the trail um, or in the plaza at key gathering points, there could be um, places for um, people to really engage with the art and create art. Um, I already talked about number four, um, create garden galleries for art exhibits or events. Um, so at a terrace to the south of the event space um, or throughout some of the uh, landscape space, there could be outdoor exhibitions. So that could be beautiful for an artist to show their work there um, and also for, uh, you know, at a particular event or for people um, to just, arrive at the site and be able to see the art from the exterior um, or as a backdrop for performances. Um, create planted porch space at outside perimeter um, of the quad buildings. So at that, um, you know, at that really solid perimeter where you can't get in, those zones um, could be a nice place to uh, think about a, a porch and a, um, a planted space uh, within that zone that, that probably won't change. Um, and provide comprehensive site furniture and infrastructure. So that's you know lighting benches, furniture, drinking fountains, bike racks, um, distributing that throughout the grounds. And I think I didn't mention this, but the um, uh, the this this is a steeply sloping and um, partly wetland part of the site, but a nature trail could um, extend throughout that space and even incorporate some small performance spaces in the woods. Um, or be a place for local schools to go on nature walks, et cetera. Um, manage stormwater proactively and transparently. Um, that's that's best practice. Um, and we will need to do that for any new major developments as the current stormwater facilities are maxed out. Um, but we could also think about how those um, can be used for educational purposes and be incorporated into that nature trail or part of the art experience, um, especially the low impact development techniques um, that make stormwater management beautiful. Okay, it is already 8.30. I will try to do this very quickly. Um, the facilities portion in the last section doesn't take very long. Um, okay, on the, on the actual build out front, so, um, I'll just skip this page and we'll go into detail on each page. So honor the form and organization of the original core campus. Um, so we believe that um, we should be 
taking um, taking cues from that historic quad and require new development adjacent to those core buildings to match the orientation and be of appropriate scale. So what you're seeing here um, are potential development sites that um, build on on that orientation and size and arrangement. And um, second, maintain a relatively low density and height across the site so that the historic buildings remain the dominant forms and the visual focus. While other buildings may attract attention, um, the historic building should still be at the, um, at the visual core. Okay, honor the historical functional organization of the campus. Um, so what that means to us is to maintain a relatively dense urban core and a surrounding landscape, more rural landscape. So it's very, it's already very dense at the core and the new build could um, still hug relatively closely to that while leaving um, the allow the new development so sorry i'm just moving down the points here so locate new developments flanking the existing quad buildings and then point three allow new development um, anywhere in the perimeter of the site to um, instead of aligning with the quad buildings to adapt to environmental conditions um, instead and focus development at the perimeter on landscape elements Here's an um, example of a, um, you know, that could be located somewhere here near the ball field of a play structure that's also an art sculpture. And, uh, and this is a, a sculpture, The Great Awakening, that um, is kind of a tourist attraction in and of itself and um, could be something that exists in that more landscape portion of the site. Identify appropriate zones for each development type. So uh, where's the right place to put retail and potential housing? Um, we think that um, new retail and near-term housing development could be um, concentrated on the north side of the site, uh, which would uh, allow for better connection to the community um, and the new arts venues. Um, what I already mentioned before, focus, so outlined in green here, focus consolidated parking garage development on the north side of the site where it can be built into the slope and accessed at a lower level from this driveway and allow the top to be the park. Focus artist live work studios and new industrial art studios to the south side of the quad. So um, while this may be slightly taller development, this could be um, a slightly lower uh, moving down from those quad buildings into the landscape zone, um, some open airy artists live work studios intermixed with galleries and industrial arts, which is a nice thing to put here because there are some smaller scale um, historic buildings that um, are, are intended to be preserved. And it's also the former site of some other shop buildings. We also looked at the potential for um, long-term townhome development at the south side, um, more distant from the music venues and along the trail axis. Um, I saw that there was a question about this, so I'll address that in the Q&A, um, but exploring the potential for a building at the perimeter. Um, Next, identify architectural interventions at existing buildings to help meet the functional demands and shape the campus spaces. Um, so I talked a bit about the plaza at the north side of the event center and the education center um, that could be flanked on three sides by building. Um, so right now, this event center and the education center you kind of walk right in into a large open space. And so creating a shared lobby and pre-function space um, that connects those two um, could allow for some wonderful synergy between those two spaces and create um, that, that real sense of arrival at a, at a singular um, space. Um, this is an image from a project that VMDO is currently working on um, at the at original Mount Vernon High School, 
which is mostly a renovation, but also some new build. And this is um, a large glassy um, welcome and lobby center um, that connects to the historic building and something similar could work here within that historic context. Um, this building here create an entry box office building at the east side of the plaza and the music barn entry um, as an arrival point for the music barn and, and box office. Um, here at the south side of the event center, create an outdoor terrace and garden uh, for a break outdoor breakout space from that large event space um, that could also be used independently for performances. Um, and then I think there's the potential for a symmetrical addition to the education center at the south. This building in the middle is kind of on axis and more um, taller and more prominent than this building. So there could be a mirroring one to the south and an empty site there. Um, and of course, we want to figure out how to fund short term maintenance for buildings um, that may be rehabilitated later, for example, some of the agricultural buildings. Okay, um, it's 836, so I'll go through this real quickly. So um, perhaps this should have been an earlier slide, but um, I'll breeze through this. So the, this is just locating all of the different pieces of program that have been identified. Um, the arts programming, so the barn and the support spaces um, as the music barn, the W1 is the events and culinary, W12 is theater, 17 and 18 is music and dance. Um, and then uh, also we're indicating creating a network of exterior performance spaces, informal and formal. So the ball field as a potential festival site and then smaller um, performance spaces throughout the landscape. And then the quads that would be um, art making courtyards. Um, the power plant has been suggested as a possible um, music um, or venue, of, uh, restaurant venue affiliated with the music barn for concessions or as a jazz club. Um, the locomotive station could be a potential restroom facility serving the uh, more landscape recreation uses. The warden's house could be short term rentals, um, you know, people visiting for the events or a bridal suite, et cetera, or artist in residence. Um, greenhouses. Um, there is the market analysis also showed that there are not enough plant nurseries in the area. Um, so that could be a good um, partnership with the greenhouses. And, um, and then the ball field could be another secondary music festival venue. Um, and then a lot of ideas about how to partner. Um, so for the, I see a question coming in about, um, about money and maybe I'll defer some of those questions to the attendees from Fairfax County, but um, we assume that a lot of these would be public private development partnerships, um, potentially even needing an events operator for the music barn. Um, and of course a developer for the retail and housing components. And then some ideas about create about how to partner to create more art on the site. Um, so with Fairfax County for a cultural center, this building here is actually already artifact storage from around Fairfax County. So there's the opportunity to um, really engage with that material. Um, could set up an annual program to partner with artists to create public art um, or partner with local schools. Um, to, uh, to provide outdoor art education and even working with higher education institutions um, to offer credited courses um, that to maybe help an artist implement their art piece. Um, partnerships with Fairfax County Park Authority. Uh, you know, these are these are all things that I think we're thinking about as potential activities that will inform how we shape the master plan. Uh, so we assume that there will be things like 5K runs, um, recreational events that move between Aquacon Regional Park and this campus. There's also potentially a desire to have pilot um, pilot projects that promote the use of um, some of these unused spaces um, that maybe are a lower priority for the campus um, that could be used for demonstration or sustainability projects. Okay, um, this slide I'll kind of maybe 
skip or not explain, but um, just that we this is a documentation of thought so far about phasing. And I think that this is all to play for in, in how we think about this and you know what the overall timeline is and how to group these things. And as I mentioned before, we're hoping to pursue also a financial um, development feasibility study um, coming up, which I think will also inform how, how this um, development would be phased and help give Fairfax County and Workhouse Arts Foundation that information. So, um, I've mentioned enough times already that we're now in the options phase uh, before the master plan. And I'll just end on um, what the next steps are. So let's have some Q&A now. Um, I'm, and then in the next couple of days, you should receive an email that will have the uh, link to the recording of this meeting. So hopefully those who registered and maybe weren't able to attend or had to leave early can see the recording. Um, and you'll also receive a link to a very short survey um, that just allows any questions that didn't get covered here to be entered there or any other points of feedback you want to give us um, uh, to be entered into that form. And we will do our best to um, respond to those questions and send that out in an email to all of those who've signed up. Um, we also do, if you didn't already take the community survey, we'll also include the link to that, which is a more extensive survey um, asking for your input. So what we're doing next is, um, is developing three master plan options. We're continuing to meet with the stakeholder committee and other Fairfax County um, groups as needed. Um, we're pursuing a parallel financial development feasibility analysis, continued transportation analysis, and cost estimating. We'll then review those three options with the stakeholders and the supervisor's office, and then um, that should put us somewhere around um, uh, early December to share again with you guys, um, with the with the community, those three options and and get feedback then. And we hope for that meeting to be a in-person meeting barring any um, pandemic related um, barriers. And then we'll work in the, uh, the final master plan development um, through December and January, and uh, hopefully wrapping that, and February, hopefully wrapping all of that up in March. Um, okay. Um, with that, um, I'll just go back to the slide with all the maps so we can navigate. And Eileen, are you able to um, sure. give me some questions, give the group some questions? Of I guess course. if anybody wants to come off of, you know, show their, um, you know, turn their cameras on and other folks from my team and the, stake, and the stakeholder team. And I also invite everyone to add their questions to the chat as mentioned previously. Um, the first question we have for you, Lauren, is um, uh, it goes back to the HRNA analysis and why you think that the townhouse recommendation is an unlikely one. Um, what I've heard from Fairfax County is that, um, well, the townhouses are, I think, in the market analysis, the assumption was that townhouses would be for sale. And what we've heard from the county so far is that um, it's unlikely that they'll want to actually sell any of this property. Um, so it seems that there would be a mismatch between that housing typology and the, and the goals of the county to keep this property intact. Okay. Our second question deals with uh, the outreach to the artistic community and individual artists. And I want to sort of pair this with a follow-on question as to whether um, we've looked at the uh, model that the Astor Gates has developed in Chicago. Um, it's, um, I guess he's a, he's an artist that works um, uh, at the University of Chicago. He's developed um, new approaches to urban development by engaging with uh, arts, and, uh, arts and public life. Oh, um, I have not heard of that. I, that sounds really exciting. Um, uh, please 
I'll, I'll look that up, but also please fill out the survey if you want to be in touch more about that. Okay. Um, I think that the, it was kind of a group decision to let the um, artist community, the Workhouse Arts Foundation artist community to just participate in all of the um, public events um, that are being offered to everybody, the survey and these meetings and, and the follow-up ones. Um, but we're certainly open to there being more consolidated feedback from that group and um, having further discussions with you. We know you have a lot to um, a lot to say and a lot of great ideas. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next question, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a concern about the the uh, capacity for seating in the event center. We may not be reflecting the full capacity. Oh, um, um, Caroline, I saw that you put something in the chat. Um, updating those numbers. So I apologize that I had the older, the older ones. I uh, will update that. Um, before we go on to the uh, question of the money and whether and how this is going to be funded, um, I think we could uh, also look at the question about signage and the visibility from uh, uh, how we're, we're going to address visibility issues from Ox Road and the entrance from the north, and and also the slowing of the traffic. How it how's I think you've addressed it in your, but um, can you sort of expound on that a little bit more? Sure. Is the question about how we would how we will achieve that, or just more about? Um, what we're again, hoping for again if i read it directly it's signage 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 oh, from, from from ox road entrance from the north and yeah and yes to slowing the traffic on ox road yeah we have um yeah i think the the kind of layered approach to um what 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 all we can do i think we went into this knowing that electronic signage may be an uphill battle because of the current right of way, you're not allowed to have an electronic sign within, you know, certain setback from the roadway. And um, so I guess our approach is, okay, how can we go directly at that issue, understand what the rules are, what the process is for overcoming that. And, um, and then secondarily, what we can do to uh, create more visibility through other means. And so that's the comprehensive landscaping approach along the road. So you know you are at a special site, the artwork, which in and of itself is its own sign and indicator of, um, of where you are, but also extending the, the um, art experience to the roadway. That's in, it's almost a, a, generous, um, a generous move to give that to um, drivers. Um, and then, of course, the the consistent um, signage. And I do, you know, we have already met with um, with Fairfax County Department of Transportation, and I think there was a representation, a representative from um, VDOT there as well. And they are conducting their own studies right now about um, traffic in the area, and at first glance didn't see the need to do any traffic slowing because there aren't currently any safety issues. So they gave some guidelines about how, you know, about what they would make the decision based on about functionality and about safety um, and operation. So hopefully this, you know, we can't just draw an electronic sign and, and say it's going to be built um, as much as we, we might want to, but hopefully um, building the case for why that change should be allowed. Thanks. Um, now we have a, a series of questions. I'll take and give them to you one by one. What's the plan for public safety for the campus and uh, uh, with all of these proposed developments? 
and where is the overflow parking you mentioned located? And number three, what is the, are the lessons learned from the neighboring development at Liberty regarding retail and a near-term residential? Okay, I don't have a great answer for a plan for public safety for the um, campus. I think we're aware of, um, of the variety of concerns that may uh, be more or less um, concerning as the development is implemented, um, you know, from, from the safety issues associated with vacant buildings in the immediate term to um, pedestrian and bicyclist safety um, or campus security. Um, there's only in, in the report so far, there's only some um, brief discussion of, of campus security, but I also know that Fairfax County and the Workhouse Arts Foundation are um, currently conducting a security assessment. And I think our, um, our development options will be informed by that. Um, if you have specific concerns that, you, um, that you're aware of or that you want us to address or have more specific questions about, I'd be happy to dig into that more. Um, the overflow parking that we mentioned is, um, so, so across Workhouse Road here at the, the north side of the intersection of Oxen Workhouse is this triangular piece of property. And I think this is like a residual of when Ox Road did this, went this direction. Um, uh, that is a contiguous piece of property with workhouse. So that could be used for overflow parking. Um, and neighboring developments at Liberty. Um, well, I would also turn that one back to you guys and get um, some thoughts about, about that destination. This is in your neighborhood and um, possibly a place that you're experiencing in a different way than we are. What we've, um, what we've heard so far um, from the stakeholder group and from just the general um, sense of the place is that, uh, and, and just our general, uh, what we observed is that the site is very densely built out, not necessarily in height, but the territory is, um, all of the historic buildings have been filled with condos and other housing and all of the space around it is all housing. And then there's the commercial development um, in the maximum security, um, former maximum security prison area. And the character of that space is very much a housing and retail neighborhood now. And that's a wonderful thing for Liberty, but it's not the, um, the goal of this campus does not seem to be to to mimic that or to create something that is um, that has a, a, a sense of place dominated by residential. In contrast, this wants to be a place that maintains its um, its identity as an arts destination. So the housing and the retail really needs to be in support of that and really create synergies rather than dominate it. Um, and so I think, you know, on the on the plus side, I think Liberty has been really successful in the way it's dealt with historic preservation and the guideline it the guidelines it developed for a new development. So we're certainly learning from that um, what's been successful there. Okay, we have a question about access from a, a current artist and teacher on the site. Um, they're concerned about if we were to eliminate the, the parking on the south side of the campus, as it may have been, may potentially happen uh, based on, on uh, the design that's chosen. How would you uh, provide ease of access to studios for loading supplies and moving art, et cetera? Um, well, I'd like to ease your mind and say, I don't think in any scenario we would eliminate parking on the south side. I think um, the idea there was that would be to actually optimize parking and, and access um, on the south side to those uses that, um, 
uh, are present on the south side. So the artist studios and the performance venues and the landscape functions would have prioritized parking and access on that side, whereas all of the parking, the, the huge volume of parking required for the thousands of patrons attending the, the events at the music barn and the theater and the education center, um, we could consolidate that and, and keep that huge volume of traffic a little bit separated from the people who are there on a day-to-day -day basis and may want that kind of, again, reserved and optimized access. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have other thoughts about that, again, we would love to hear them and understand your experience and your needs there. Um, there's a comment about um, having an internal road that leads to Alpine X exclusively that could allow a shuttle service um, that does not um, include major roadways. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think we kind of mentioned that it's not necessarily a question, um, but uh, a comment. Um, yeah, okay, that's that's great input. I think that's a great idea. Um, and certainly something that will have to be informed by, you know, as we get more information about that development. And of course, there are um, intervening ravines and recycling facilities um, to navigate in creating something like that. So I'm as interested as you are in, in making that um, uh, explicit connection. And I think that's a great idea um, for the shuttle service. I, I think we're getting towards nine o'clock. Um, if we haven't answered your questions already, uh, we can certainly, um, we'll be responding to your questions via email and on the project website. Um, unless there are some immediate questions that would those would like to, I know there's a series of comments that we'll certainly also be looking at. I'm putting in the chat right now a link to a short survey, which is just a form to um, basically asking uh, what questions you have and what comments you have and, and other input. Um, so if, this will come out in an email, but if you're here and wanna click it now, um, you have it. Um, okay, well, it's strange to have a public meeting and not hear anybody's real voices. Um, uh, but I really appreciate everybody's attention through this long, long presentation and your great comments and questions. We will do our best to get to all of them. Um, and we're, we're open to input. I think all of our Fairfax County representatives, Gossam and Joan and Eileen, um, you can get in touch with them. You can email me directly. You can fill out this survey. Um, and we're excited to speak with you again in a few months. Thank you all so much. I'm gonna stay on until I see other people leave and look at the chat.